Hey guys, so I thought I'd, well I'm just basically at work right now, so I thought I'd do a little review for you guys, so I can put it up on the channel. Uh, this is Brothers... The Brothers Bloom is a film that I actually was told by a professor to see for a class and I didn't get to see it in time but like he had a suggestion of three films I watched two of them he said you only had to watch two of the three so I really really wanted to see the Brothers Bloom I really enjoy it. it's a film directed by Rian Johnson who is responsible for works such as Brick which is a fantastic independent film and Looper which is one of my favorite sci-fi films of all time and he's directing Star Wars Episode 8 so what is it that I like so much about the Brothers Bloom is that it's kind of a nostalgia feel towards the uh, the crime capers the con men of old despite the fact that it takes place in modern time there's a lot the brothers themselves kind of Harken themselves to the time of the 50s or the 40s because they're walking around in nice gabardine suits But they're wearing like top hat like not top hats, but um, baller hats and all these bowler hats and all these other sort of uh, Sort of necessities that are of the past yet They are living in the present day and what is probably one of my favorite aspects of the film is that the two brothers, one of them played by Mark Ruffalo, who is the architect of all the plants, and then there's Adrian Brody, who plays Bloom. And he is always the sucker, sort of. Not so is that he is the one who gets the girl to like him, or is the one who's always emotionally affected by the cons. Whereas Mark Ruffalo is happy, like, he's happy with just doing the cons. Adrian Brody doesn't really have a purpose in life other than to just do what his brother Bre tells him. And he's always... He wants to actually feel something for real, but he doesn't know what to do with himself. And that is the main concept of the film, is that they meet with Rachel Rice, who is a, a really rich daughter of an oil baron who has lived her life inside her home all her life because she was mistakenly diagnosed with a bunch of uh, allergens that she actually didn't have. And they're both, they're both unknown to each other in the terms of really feeling something like she's actually has no idea what it's like to be in a relationship whereas adrian brody doesn't know what it feels like to be in a real relationship because he's always had to break them off and he's emotionally devastated himself and picked off a bit of himself every time so the humor in this film is very funny i think it's really well written it's not only tricking the characters but it's also tricking you throughout the entire film and that's something I like and even when you watch it for a second time or a third time you're still trying to figure out what is real what isn't it's not it's a light-hearted version of the prestige if anything but it's a lot clearer as well and I I enjoy this movie is it without flaws no there's a few flaws there's a, uh, some kind of odd artistic moments there's parts of the film that kind of make you wonder whether this film is it does it does some really weird things that like how did they do that why did they do that that kind of just seems fairy tale-ish now and again this is a con story that kind of makes it sound as though it's a fairy tale in terms of that it's embellishing things i still like this film i enjoy it there are some flaws with it the soundtrack's pretty cool too really cool work by nathan johnson no nathan jones if you've never seen it it's a cool con film it's a bit of a it's got a lot of influences for previous con films but it also does itself a service by trying to be different in diff in certain aspects. Not all of them, and it acknowledges that there are aspects of it that are have been done before. But this one cements itself in an attempt at something different. So I would give The Brothers Bloom a 5 out of 7. I enjoy it. It's not one of Rian Johnson's best films, but really he only has three of which to really talk about right now, except for the up-and-coming uh, episode 8. So, out of all Rian Johnson's, it's not my favorite one of his works. Uh, it's probably my least favorite, but I still really enjoy it. Anyways, that's all for me. I'll see you guys later.